Men's Swimming heats up the pool with a second place finish at the Bucknell Invitational. Hello, I'm Anna Gomez. And I'm Jason Lindsay. Men's Basketball also has a strong showing against Bucknell and give Villanova a run for their money. You're watching LaSalle TV's home for Explore Athletics. Sports Line. Welcome to Sportsline. We have a pretty big show for you this week as we recap all of LaSalle action this week. And we look back on the fall 2016 season for cross country, field hockey, volleyball, soccer, golf, and water polo through the eyes of these two charming LaSalle athletics pundits. <laughs> but first, let's take a look at what went down this past week for our athletes. Men's and women's track and field kicked off their season at the Jack Pry Invitational. And oh boy, did they look strong. It was Justin Guerre who got the Explorer started as he competed in the 60 meter sprint. Guerre finished with a time of 6.89 seconds, which granted him first place, but he did not stop there. The blue and gold junior then took on the 300 meter and landed in first place, breaking LaSalle's record in a, with an exact time of 35.21 seconds. Guerre beat a 10 year old record for LaSalle. And for the women, a record as, was broken as well as Amber Jenkins and Desiree Osley, who ran in the 300 meter event, finished with a time of 41.49 seconds and 41.65 seconds respectively. This led them to break the 41.99 second record by Karen Lugay in 2003. And then in a three day weekend tournament at Bucknell, men's swimming and diving placed second overall out of eight teams. And it was the short distance swimmers that again boosted this team. Fabian Bergman took second in the 200 and in the 100. Uh, three explorers took top 10 finishes. In fourth, Marcus Forsgren. Fifth was Norman Gregory. And Sam Odtala took sixth right behind his teammates. And in the 200 breast, Dmitry Miladinovic took third. For her 200 yard breast event, Colin Kessinger took second in the finals, beating out six other contenders by just two seconds. Eva Osterhaus squeezed her way into a top eight final finish in the 200 butterfly. And in the 400 yard freestyle, a relay team of Kate Hay, Hannah Elliott, Olivia DiStefano, and Aus Osterhaus clinched fifth place. In diving, Sydney Zobo took eighth place for herself in the three meter dive behind a, just a wall of Massachusetts divers. The UMass women's basketball made a killer debut in A-10 play by beating Dayton on December 4th. Dayton was expected to handily take the win, but they were not expecting Jasmine Alston and Micaiah Owens. LaSalle held their own all game, keeping things close throughout, leading with six points down with five minutes left. And Dayton tried to come back with just two minutes, but Alston and Owens knocked back a few foul shots and winning this game 54 to 51. I can dig. <laughs> And in a huge Big Five upset, LaSalle beat Penn on Wednesday in overtime thanks to an Adriana Miller three-point buzzer beater. LaSalle was well behind in the last quarter, but a series of successful foul shots from Miller and baskets from Deja Bullock and Amy Griffin tied it up right before overtime was called. At this point, this was Penn's game to lose. Penn started to run away with a seven-point lead at 55 to LaSalle's 48, but Griffin and Shalila, Shalila Miller posted points, but LaSalle was still two behind. Adriana Miller just makes a beautiful three-point basket. It was absolutely stunning. It was less than a second, second left. It was basically men's homecoming reversed. Women won. It was great. Oh, and uh, speaking of homecoming, the game after homecoming that uh, really just felt amazing was men's basketball versus Bucknell. Can we roll the tape, please? All right. So this was a beautiful Saturday afternoon home game at the goal, and right away, the game started off slow, but we started seeing a serious change in play, some hard defense, and you see Pookie Powell and Cleon right there, dishes off of JP just for a smooth three-pointer. I can just feel Jordan Price has been on when he's almost just having to react to it. Once again, you see another steal from Pookie, and then instead of going for a huge dunk, he decided to go for the layup, which was very, very refreshing. And then you see DJ Johnson breaking ankles. I just love a good broken ankle, and this was a pretty pathetic one. This guy was so rattled by the end of the game, number 23. Oh, and right there, DJ Johnson again. No idea where he's coming out of. Like, he's just coming out of nowhere with these huge blocks. It looked like Bucknell couldn't even get their feet set. And right here, you just see Johnny Schuler comes out, scores immediately. All nine players who touched the floor during this game 
all of them scored. And it was probably one of our strongest efforts. And right there, you can see Pookie Powell and BJ Johnson just leaping up. There is nothing that you can do when something like that happens. And right here, Jordan Price dishes to Yevgen, going for the reverse. He, Yevgen was matched up with number 20, who is one of Bucknell's leading scorers. They had no idea how to even try to block him, like uh, to try to stop Yevgen. Yevgen shut down number 20. It was amazing. And right there, you're seeing another beautiful three-pointer by uh, DJ Johnson and Amar Stukes. Just, you know, 83-73. I can feel it. BJ and Jordan Price, they both combined 42 seconds. Whoa! Wow. Thank you, Jake. On to Tuesday, where uh, men's basketball took on Villanova, where uh, they headed to University City and to take on national champions Villanova at the Palestra. The first half of the game, which was nationally televised on ESPN, was a battle between the Explorers. Let's take a look at the footage. And the Wildcats were going to have a lead. The LaSalle was booming with a crowd behind them, and the Explorers fought 9-0 for the 9-0 Wildcats in the first half, but they just could not maintain a more than three-point lead. The lead bounced back, and, uh, yes, the lead bounced back and forth for most of the opening half for the blue and gold, uh, as we went into halftime trailing Nova by just four points. The Wildcats took off any scoring spree in the second half, with just over seven minutes left in the game. Nova led 65 to 52. Back to back three pointers from Johnny Schuler and Pookie Powell cut the Wildcats lead to seven, but unfortunately, LaSalle could not catch up on, to the national champions and ultimately fell 89 to 71. Powell led, it, Powell led LaSalle in scoring with a career-high 27 points in the game coming off the bench, scoring 20 of those points in the second half alone. Now, Jake, I just, what do you think of this? What like, do you think of this? Um, Pookie was on. <laughs> like, you just seen these drop-back three-pointers three just really cutting up. The dude is six feet tall, taking on, like, number one Villanova, and he's making them, like, they just, they just can't keep up. So... I Great game to watch, <laughs> even, yeah. though, even though we did drop it. Heck yeah. uh, but that is all we've got for the first half of the show. When we come back, we look back on the fall 2016 seasons for the Explorer Athletics. It's going to be a roller coaster, so stick around. Woo! Rocking around. At LTV. In the joyful studio. Crew members around where you can see. Everybody wants to go. Running around the studio. We get the sets ready. Later we'll talk about some sports. And you'll have something to see. Q&A brings a special kind of feeling when you win. We're, We're here, here to help your TV watching. With the news of joyful tidings, rocking around the community. And there's a lot we have to say. Everyone recording merrily in the old South TV. I think the Okay, because it's like, but it's in the old South TV. Let me all just burst into a floor. Welcome back. I have some bad news. This is Sportsline's last episode of 2016. You're probably lost, and I know. You should be devastated, but no fear. We'll be back in the third week in January, but before then, we want to take just a nice summer walk back on just how LaSalle Athletics performed through this fall 26 season and how we here at Sportsline have covered it. Before we get into it, let's take a look at some of our favorite plays from the fall season. Please take it away. We're taking a look. Alex Pitcher, long shot from the corner. Dang. Madison Speed, probably the one of the only goals they really pulled off there. But this is one of uh, probably infamous, uh, just a really bizarre play. There's going to be one more time I'm going to run through this, but this might be the, actually the most confusing volleyball play I've seen in a very long time. And I'm very, very distraught that LaSalle Explorers just somehow didn't make it. But as you can see right there, ball goes out. But let's take a look through some of these more ridiculous moments. Right off, oh, then there's Phoebe Cook just spinning in circles, has no <laughs> idea what's actually happening. But first, off the serve, what's that? She just lays out. Next, then she lays out. 
Like, look at the way those legs are bent. That's like a, an isosceles triangle. Then you have that, and she just dives down, throws it up, and then that, that play, though, went on for like 40 seconds. I don't even know. It just bothers me. Then we go to number five, Jasmine Austin. I love my broken ankles. Sit down. Jasmine Austin with that beautiful little jumper. A oh, beast. Look at this, ready? In slow-mo. That's 50, oh. Oh, 50% speed. Beautiful. I like it. <laughs> right off the backboard. Jasmine Austin, prime. There we go. Paige McDowell, snipe, Ooh. top corner. Beautiful, absolutely. I mean, that was just, that's just, she's yeah. a stud. That is scary. And then finally, Tony Danielle right here for number three. Straight up, like, that has, what is that, like 2,000 yard <laughs> kick? A to, legendary. To just hit Connor Randall perfectly in the dome for a win, for like the, for a goal. I don't know, that one just absolutely blew my mind. Just, just the atmosphere. And right here, is that, is that Gerald Wright? No, that's BJ Johnson. BJ Johnson is BJ Johnson, and BJ Johnson should be BJ Johnson for as long as he wants to be. B just keep on being a ham. BJ <laughs> Johnson is a ham. <laughs> finally, my favorite, Rachel Hartman with a studly saved. She's using what? A stick to like block that? I don't even know. I. She's our favorite player on the I know. Side. We Rachel have to Hart say it. Yeah, Rachel Hartman. She she one. wins at everything. Ugh. But let us let us get into. Let's break down all of these sports for 2016. Men's cross country ran in a total of five invitationals this past season. The team closed out their fall season by placing 13th at the NCAA regionals. The blue and gold placed sixth at the Atlantic 10 championship, thanks to senior. Francis Ferruzzi's sixth place finish for LaSalle. Ferruzzi's performance at the 810 championship earned him all conference honors. Seriously, um Ferruzzi is a is he's just the strongest force for for cross yeah. country. And it's like it's like after, you know, we don't have Nico Greco anymore, we don't have some of these classics, these guys that were just consistently, you know, just tossing up times just like this. Mm -hmm. Um honestly, like really, really impressive. And I think like we wouldn't like without Fran Ferruzzi, like you don't have the same cross country team, and I think yeah. that is a big deal. And right there, sixth place in the Jack Pyre Invitational. Placed fifth at the ATN Championships. Oof. That was massive. Unreal. So that brings us though to cross country, and you know what? Runner Caitlin Poez was November Athlete of the Month for LaSalle as she continues her collegiate career. And this is sophomore, clinched second in the ATN Championship. And like, come on. Zekley took first for the for, for the past two years, but Poez is proving not to be counted out. She's a versatile athlete like Feruzzi and lending her talents to the track as well. And we expect her to perform well in her second season this winter. But dang, Kaylin Poez, she's like, like she's like this tall, <laughs> and then is just a, creaming the competition. Mm -hmm. It's she, absolutely I mean, insane. she's been placing mid tier in some of these competitions, but she's been posting up first and second spots for for, for LaSalle. Especially um, yeah, and and like for very important meets. She's mm -hmm. stepping up when it's the important meets. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Who knows? We're going on to golf with key athlete Evan Gaser. He placed fifth at the City Six Championships and he's a freshman. Yep. He was A-10 Rookie of the Week uh, because of that performance. I mean, he, he did, he posted a, a 73 at City Six, which was huge. Yep. Um, and then at Binghamton, 36 hole, 72. Like, come on. Like, the thing is that's that's so crazy about that is I had such high hopes that PJ Asierno was going to step mm -hmm. in. But really, when you have somebody like PJ Asierno in front of you and then you have that incentive as a freshman, like, it's insane. So, mm -hmm. um, definitely really excited to see where he kind of takes it, especially as, like, LaSalle is getting their golf program finally, yes. you know, worked out. So, it's getting me very, very hyped up. Now we're going to move on to field hockey yes. with our love, Rachel Hartman. Uh, in their fall 2016 season, field hockey fought for their wins with a uh, dismal offense, but a strong defense. They were outshot 230 to 187, but were only outscored 34 to 31, thanks to Rachel, the wall, Hartman. We were very hopeful to see an A-10 run with several seasoned players, but we had some tough losses to UMass and St. Francis at the end of the season, which knocked them out of the championship. Now, Rachel Hartman, you saw those stats up there. She She's posting up, I mean, say, point, uh, saves for game is 0. .76. She's just, it's she's absolutely insane, yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think, uh, you know, she's done an amazing job for the team, really got the recognition that she deserved. Mm -hmm. And that brings us to, uh, to number to tennis, which is Francesco Maori. Now, this guy's a sophomore, and he has been a stud in singles. He pretty much he went undefeated for the fall semester when he was doing singles. And you know what? Like, we don't have a lot of strong players on, you know, like just the tennis team. Mm -hmm. Like, people that are able to step in. Um, but, hey, he was the only win against, uh, like, it was Kentucky, Northern Kentucky, mm -hmm. like, which is, like, a huge deal. So, really, he's, really big He's going to be an, a, a rookie that's going to really 
try to build up this program yeah. for, for, for tennis. Yep. Uh, which brings us to men's water polo, a program we're building up as well. Uh, Alex Pitcher, just the most consistent high scorer. Like he seriously, like four goals a game pretty much? Five like goals a game. I, I think his top was 13. It was, it was something crazy. Like he's just a, a top scorer. He's a sophomore, so he's going to stick around for a while uh, as, as we continue on with men's water polo. So that's going to be really exciting to see. Yeah, no, um, and it's just exciting. Um, not only him, but uh, just even like Joey DeFusco, like some mm -hmm. of these guys, like not every everybody on that team, even though they're young, like, you know what? They got a lot of promise. Mm -hmm. okay. So that also brings me to men's soccer. And they came into the season hot and motivated, starting out the gate, firing off a five and one start. Before coming down to earth, they maintained excellent play, setting themselves up uh, nicely just in the A-10 tournament. And once they beat number two seed Massachusetts going into the tournament, dastard the UMass, Rhode Island <laughs> took round one and they were eliminated. And now the Explorers relied heavily on their defensive play, especially by their goalies, senior Matt Kirk and uh, Mike Kirk and sophomore Cameron Keyes all season. And with a lot of juniors on the squad, they have some serious potential for next season. But come on, senior Mike Kirk, oh, my heart. <laughs> Just a heartthrob on in in the goal. Like he's he's just he was a really really strong player for, uh, for La Salle. We really needed him in goal because yeah. we our offense they they ended up making plays. But yeah. we really I mean it shout out to Matt Robinson. Just, yeah, it, it was, was just on and, on and off. But so we could count on Mike Kirk. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Uh, which brings us to women's soccer. Uh, and the women struggled this season, especially on the offensive side as well. Uh, this team was able to set up opportunities, but they were always struggling to finish uh, on finishing, causing a really long season for them. Uh, we have to give them credit, though. They held their own against top seed teams, I'll bet settling for ties. Uh, the women closed out their season 4 and 10, 4, 10 and 4 after eight double overtimes. This team fought especially hard, and they just missed the A-10 tournament by two points. Let's talk Deja Davis. Deja Davis, you know what? She was really the person that really helped lead that off offense. Mm -hmm. And you know what? Even like Deja was just a great presence, you know, really giving that pressure. And even though she didn't score that many times, like she mm -hmm. she led scoring with five goals that season. But the thing is, the, no it one was scored. just it was no one was scoring, and it was it wasn't even about them. It was about just those moments in sports where. <laughs> Just those opportunities just aren't pulling through. You don't have mm -hmm. luck on your side. And uh, it was just a really incredibly tough season to watch. But the thing is, like, seeing, like, Deja and um, Kristen Hogstad and these guys, like, really, you know, Ballad and Paige thing. McDowell. And, yeah. like, McDowell. it's like, I wish something better could have happened with that. Mm -hmm. But, geez, you guys are breaking my heart. <laughs> yeah. 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 And that brings us on to volleyball. And now, you know, volleyball had a bit of a rough season. And... They're definitely on the up and coming, especially with the player Devin Cora. And she came out with a crazy season. And that 392.5 points, like 327 kills, holy kielbasa, <laughs> that is a lot. And you know what? She was a serious offensive catalyst. Some of those wins that we did yet, you know, that she is one of the reasons. Just like how we had Taylor Height last year mm -hmm. that was offering that up. I think Devin Cora has exceeded Taylor Hart. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh my gosh. And and an we also have to give it up to, to some of the other new players that we we brought in as well. Exactly. Uh, we ha last year we just had Taylor, and this year we we have Cora. We have also have a, a, a three or four other really strong players. Uh, but that is quite a bit of Lasalle oh. Athletics. Luckily, we've been keeping all, up all season, so that hopefully wasn't that was just a nice little review. Uh, you would know if you watch Sportsline often, that we have a very special tradition here, and that are that is the Sportsline teasers. In the past, we've been a pretty much all business, but someone has taken it upon himself to be a little more freewheeling. So take a look at this. Swimming sets the pace for their season with key performances, while field hockey closes things out on a bittersweet high. Hello, I'm Anna Gomez. And I'm Jake Smolinski. Men's soccer squeezes their way into the A-10 tourney. How do they do it? You'll have to stick around and watch LaSalle TV's home for Explorer Athletics. Sportsline. 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 You're watching LaSalle TV's home for Explorer Athletics. Sportsline. Now, there's no other reason I put that together than to highlight the transformation of Jake, transformation of Jake Smolenski over the semester. All right, Jake, you've gotten quite a bit of flack. I have, you know. Um, I'm just a guy. Sometimes I like a stash. Sometimes I like a beard. Sometimes I like to just shave my head. I don't know what's happening half the time. You know what? But this is the thing. You get a lot. You just you do your you do what you want, and I dig it. 
So because of that, I'm officially starting a Sportsline tradition. You started it last year, but I'm starting a new one with the Sportsline Best Dressed of 2016. So let's take a look. Let's roll it. Jake is a fashion <laughs> icon. We started out the season with a beard. Look at how just majestic this beard is. It's just absolutely stunning. Look at this stud. He's wearing this shirt with a bucket hat. And then look, it just changes the game with a baseball hat. And then shows up after Thanksgiving break with just an absolutely stunning, blinding yeah, absolutely bald head. Blinding. Just <laughs> absolutely beautiful. Jake, how do you feel about this? You know, I'm glad I'm getting some recognition for it because you know what? You know, like just people, you know, they're just not in tune with what real fashion is, <laughs> what it means to be an icon. And you know what? I haven't ever thought of myself as an icon, but I do have to thank you for giving me that status because now my ego is inflated <laughs> probably to a very unhealthy point. It's nowhere near Brendan Rigney's. That is a good point. Brendan Rigney's ego was much worse. Actually, no, Brendan had no ego left by the time he left LaSalle. But on the bright side, you know, <laughs> anyway, Frankie Andrella won it last year. Yes. Jake Smolinski wins the honors this year. Move aside Harry Styles. Jake Smolinski is the fashion icon. I would have to say, though, Frank Andrella, he rocked cowboy boots and, and the bolo. And that's something that I just can't personally do myself. And uh, But the thing is, you know what? If I could give any advice to the sports line viewers out there, I'd say keep it fresco. That's first of all. Got to, got to, got to keep things nice and uh, chilled out. Number two, find a lot of old things to wear because those can be repurposed. And number three, experiment with facial hair, especially uh, even even the girls. Honestly, <laughs> um, there needs to be more stashes in the workplace. No, you know what? I agree because not not with the facial hair. <laughs> <laughs> I agree with old things. It's actually I want to just give you a nice little shout out. This pin, my grandmother's, and it is. 87th birthday in December, so happy birthday, Grandma. And that is all we have uh, for Sportsline in 2016. Enough of this fluff. When we come back, we're going to take a look at what we, what we can look forward to in the spring. Stay tuned. Dang. <laughs> I love that new show, Flip. I, I gotta keep up, so news you can use has to be my favorite. I love LaSalle Sports, so Sportsline is my favorite TV show. We, we love LaSalle TV. TV. I love that new show with the psychology department, Relationships 101. I love Backstage Pass, it's my favorite show. We, we love, love LaSalle, LaSalle TV. TV. Sports Talk Philadelphia. q and I love that show. It's gotta be LaSalle TV News. I love LaSalle TV. LTV News, where the action never stops. I love watching LTV News. I love watching LTV News every Sunday at 10.30. I love LTV News producer Dave Roberts. Before I go to class on Monday mornings, I watch LTV News at 8 a.m. I love watching Kirsten and Callie on LTV News. Tuesdays at 10, we watch LTV News. Welcome back. There is plenty of LaSalle sports action this upcoming week, so let's take a look at what's in store, or not this week actually, but let's take a look at what's in store for LaSalle athletics in 2017. Women's water polo will kick off their inaugural season in 2017 starting in March against Hartwick and Brown. They'll get into conference play in the Metro Atlantic Athletic Conference against the likes of Iona, Wagner, and Marist. Yeah, and so they will continue on their season with a series of home meets in January before prepping for the A-10 and NCAA championships. Basketball will continue their seasons in hopes of contending in the A-10 play, which we've seen both teams have solid chances at this point. But before we get into 2017, Kyle McIntosh gives you the deets on one of the last games of 2016 for the men. So let's take a look at that. 
Hello, I'm Kyle McIntosh here with this week's marquee matchup. We have a special game this weekend as the LaSalle Explorers will be playing the Georgetown Hoyas live on ESPN2. The game will take place in the American Airlines Arena, the home of the Miami Heat, on Saturday, December 10th at 2 p.m. This game is a part of the Hoopal Miami Invitational, an event also headlined by a matchup between Temple and DePaul University. The Hoyas are currently 5-4 while LaSalle is 4-2. It's a matchup of unknown elements as both teams haven't played each other in recent history. Georgetown will have a lot of tape to watch to figure out what makes our Explorers win. Redshirt junior guard Jordan Price and redshirt junior guard and forward B.J. Johnson are the players to watch. They lead LaSalle in scoring, with Johnson having scored 112 points, and Price is right behind him at 111. Johnson has made just one more shot than Price has, but Price is the team's leading three-point shooter. These two phenomenal players are the key to LaSalle leaving the arena with a victory. Another explorer to watch will be redshirt junior guard Amar Stukes, who has been an impressive defender, leading LaSalle in steals with 11, which averages to just under two a game. Shutting Georgetown's top players down will be a key to our victory. It is up to the explorers to not let the stats get them down. If the Hoyas attempt to underestimate the blue and gold for a second, the explorers will make them pay for it. Another key to the game for LaSalle is to not be intimidated by being broadcast on national TV. It isn't often that LaSalle has an opportunity to play on a station like ESPN. Hopefully the bright lights and bigger stage won't leave them too intimidated as Georgetown is used to the cameras in Big East basketball. This game is an important opportunity for LaSalle as it will help prepare them for a possible entry into the March Madness tournament again, as long as they can continue to win the important games. This is the first test of many, but the LaSalle Explorers have what it takes to get the win. Remember to tune in to ESPN2 to watch this exciting game on December 10th at 2 p.m. For Sportsline, I'm Kyle McIntosh. Oh, thanks, Kyle. Um, but you know what? For Picks of the Week this week, I'm switching it around. I want to just take a minute to thank our devoted team of Sportsline writers, and these writers are LaSalle students just like us that are also taking classes, interning, writing for the Collegian, and often producing LaSalle TV shows of their own. So thank you, Tommy McIntyre, Steve Graham, Eddie Dunn, Kelly Montana. Ty Moore, Sean Kelly, Dan Brady, and Steven Silvestro. The show could not have happened without you. Thank you guys, you guys are the best. I love the crew. Yep. Mm. And that just about wraps it up for us this year. If you can't make it out to see the marquee matchup, be sure to tune in uh, for our coverage next year. Keep up with this week's other sporting events by visiting GoExplorers.com. And also check us out on Facebook at Facebook.com slash LaSalle TV and we welcome to send you, uh, you know, your thoughts, maybe your suggestions there. For Kyle and our Sportsline team, I'm Anna Gomez. And I'm Jake Splinsky. Thanks for joining and we will see you at the game.